TVP number 132. Mean Time to Harassment Revisited, Gauging the Efficacy of Vanu. This article can be read at vanupodcast.com forward slash 132. And uh, the associated MTH chart from Rayo's Vanu the Search for Personal Freedom uh, will be uh, there at vanupodcast.com forward slash 132. But yeah, on this episode of the Vanu Podcast, we revisit the concept of mean time to harassment, uh, Rayo's proposed metric for gauging the efficacy of a given Vanu lifestyle uh, or activity level. Put another way, it's a measure of the time between interactions with coercers. This re-examination will also feature Kyle Reardon's article published in February 2017, sharing a similar title as this podcast. Uh, please enjoy, and cheers to a liberated 2022. Quote, Know thyself. Know thy adversary. Adopt and adapt their strategies, not to dominate them, but to keep yourself free. Do everything possible to postpone any sweeping counter moves your adversary may attempt and keep on buying time. Perhaps enough time for them to start killing each other off. And why not? They've been using that particular tactic on us for millennia. End quote. The Anti-Terrorist. The accompanying chart was published by Rayo in 1973, so as to illustrate what he thought was a way to measure the efficacy of Vanu itself. He wrote, quote, Occasionally, especially when some project isn't going too well, I ask myself, can Dr. Gatherer and I achieve enough Vanu for Vanu to be attractive on more than an experimental basis? Where have we reached a point of diminishing returns, beyond which a vast effort will yield only a small improvement? To conceptualize this better, I made the following graph. The vertical axis represents Vanu expressed in terms of mean time to harassment, MTH. Each vertical unit is approximately a 10 times increase in MTH. The horizontal axis represents amount of activity, also difficulty of concealment, end quote. Mean time to harassment, then, can be defined as the strength of Vanu, which is expressed in years. The difficulty in concealing a Vanuum, the place or situation of an invulnerability to coercion, is equivalent to the amount of activity occurring within said Vanu shelters, regardless of what type it is, such as the following. Summer survival, all-weather survival, comfortable home, small workshop or laboratory, small manufacturing, light industry, and heavy industry. Obviously, the larger a Vanuum becomes, the less mobile it is, proportionally speaking. However, greater competency in Vanuumi, the art of achieving an invulnerability to coercion, necessarily requires, I believe, a nearly generous potpourri, smorgasbord, casserole of concealment, deception, deterrence, and even defense. Think secluded castle. Regarding competency, Rayo said, quote, The diagonal lines represent levels of capability, one order of magnitude, 10x apart. Six years ago, in 1967, when I was becoming seriously interested in Vanu but had little experience, my competence was roughly represented by line A. Three years ago, after experience with living in a van, competence had increased to line B. Today, our competence level is approximated by C. Thus, at present, we can choose among the following. A small tent, adequate for summer only, in a remote place with 100 years MTH. A larger tent, and more equipment and supplies in a place with year-round access, and a 10-year MTH. The larger tent is also more visible." End quote. In other words, by becoming newer, having comparatively more invulnerability to coercion, the more activity can occur without lowering one's MTH. Rayo further explained that, quote, Within the shaded area, Vanu is not likely worthwhile. That is, total cost of being Vanu will usually exceed the total benefits. The boundary between the viable and non-viable situations slopes downwards to the left, at least under present conditions. This is because, one, the lower levels of activity require much less equipment, and thus a higher probability of confiscation is acceptable, and two, the lower levels of activity are less suspicious, and thus unlikely to lead to serious loss, even if discovered. End quote. This is rather significant, for it gauges the profitable viability of annuance, the process of achieving an invulnerability to coercion. For example, Rayo's chart would indicate the minimum profitable viability of concealing a venuum relative to one's competency at venumi, which is expressed in MTH as such. One-year MTH, A-level summer survival, and B-level all-weather survival. Ten-year MTH, C-level all-weather survival, D-level comfortable home, E-level small workshop or laboratory, and F-level small manufacturing. Finally, 100-year MTH, G-level small manufacturing, and H-level light industry. So what has been the actual reality of becoming Vanuer? Rayo says, quote, 
With our present capability, line C, we really aren't able to enjoy a comfortable home the year round and be Vanu. So long as we have sea level capability, we can trade off between increasing Vanu and increasing activity. But increasing both requires more capability. Sea level Vanu is attractive, except in a disaster survival situation, only to experimenters in Vanu, pioneers, who are interested in Vanu for its own sake. Our present capability at Vanu has limited usefulness. Most people prefer a comfortable home that is relatively non Vanu to Spartan survival uh, with relative Vanu. A minimum level of D level capability is necessary for Vanu to be attractive to many people other than experimenters. E level is probably minimum for development of much of an alternative economy worthy of the name. End quote. His results and observations are quite illuminating to say the least. A level, B level, and even C level venuance are little different from wilderness survival or bugging out, from what I can tell. D level is approximately van dwelling, van nomadism, and E level is essentially that of the tiny house aficionados. F level small manufacturing could very well be akin to my fictional character Rebecca's hidden bedchamber within the nondescript garage located amongst the rest of that industrial park, in my Agoras anecdote. Rayo continues, quote, My present expectations are that G and I can progress to level D primarily by refining present techniques, living mostly above ground and importing most supplies. Progressing beyond D will probably require fully underground shelters and new access techniques. During the past six years, we made plenty of mistakes which slowed us down. There was no one we knew of to teach us, so there was much trial and error. Today, we could probably guide an inexperienced but highly motivated person, what I was six years ago, to our present level in a year or less, end quote. As can be expected, import-export with the Servile Society becomes more important as competency is developed. I guess the real trick at that point would be how to conduct such import-export despite the travel regulations imposed upon a Vanuan, one who has an invulnerability to coercion, by the state. I think it's actually conceivable that Rayo might still be alive himself, not only given his expected age, but also due to MTH. If indeed he managed to increase his competency sufficiently, then I'd imagine he's squared away right now, wherever he is, being rather productive by being Vanuer than I am currently. Ultimately though, is MTH a reliable gauge of Vanu? I think it provides a way to conceptualize Vanuans itself, quite frankly, for as Rayo observed, quote, Vanuists disagree about whether one should first see greater activity or greater MTH. Some believe that the neophyte should first try to build a large and profitable but non-Vanu conventional business, then attempt to Vanu it. Evidence is inconclusive, but I believe the opposite approach is much more promising. Become Vanu at a relatively low level acti of, of activity, then attempt to increase activity while maintaining or increasing Vanu. Points. The more people involved in the more interactions with that society, the more difficult any change of lifestyle. A non-Vanu enterprise is apt to have little in common with a Vanu enterprise. Experience gained during the former will probably not be particularly helpful when doing the latter." End quote. Not to be underscored is my realization that implementing good security culture after the fact is much more difficult than doing so beforehand. Simply put, exercising one's right to privacy from the beginning is rather indicative of greater success than trying to do so unsuccessfully after having given it up. Finally, I do consider MTH as a decent rule of thumb, if nothing else, by which to gauge the trade-offs of concealing a venuum relative to one's competency at Venumi. You've just heard TVP number 132, Meantime to Harassment Revisited, gauging the efficacy of Vanu. And for a more thorough discussion on the freedom strategy of Vanu, check out my book, Vanu, a Strategy for Self-Liberation, which can be found at libertyintertack.com forward slash Vanu book uh, in paperback format, uh, as well as uh, for free download. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, always remember, Vanu is yours for the making. Vanu means relative physical invulnerability to coercion. Vanu is a contraction of voluntary and not vulnerable. Vanu is somewhat like freedom or security, but those words mean many different things to different people. Rather than argue about what those words ought to mean, I speak of Vanu. Coercion includes murder, mayhem, slavery, robbery, rape, extortion, pollution, any physical interference with peaceful activities of another, whether by individuals or organizations. Coercion, especially institutionalized forms such as war, regimentations, and taxes, is one of the major problems of mankind. Practically all past attempts at solution have been top-down efforts to change society as a whole. Since the days of Babylon, there have been countless attempts to reform governments, take over governments, destroy governments, and manipulate public opinion. 
At most, such efforts bring temporary relief. Usually they have little effect. Often, they make matters worse. Vanu Life represents a different approach to the problem. Vanu Life does not waste space scolding government officials or proclaiming how society ought to be. Vanu Life speaks to you as an individual or small group and suggests ways you can avoid exploiting and being exploited. As you reduce the vulnerability, not only do you help yourself, indirectly you also help others by decreasing support of criminal institutions. Vanu is not necessarily only a few. Vanu will expand as there are more people willing to do. A Vanuan is a person who has achieved relative and vulnerability to coercion. There are many kinds. Some live in the wilderness, where outsiders rarely go. Others live under the earth. Others move from place to place, living in vans, campers, buses, boats, or tents. Some have been Vanu for ages, people such as gypsies, mountain men, hobos, seminoles. Others are recent refugees from the dying cities. This issue describes some of the equipment and techniques used. In future issues, I hope you'll add your knowledge to what is in here. Vanu life. How to live and let live out of sight and minds of those unwilling to let live by people who are doing it. To order your paperback copy today, just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu Life. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu Life. Or to download this publication for free, visit vanupodcast.com forward slash VL.